You're welcome back to the AM Club here on MX24. If you're just joining us, thank you for choosing us. Thank you for being a part of this exciting morning show. My name is Miriam Udwak Menta. We're moving straight to Lifestyle Daily, and today we're having a conversation on ulcer. Awesome. Yes, I know you've heard it before. Sometimes you understand, sometimes you don't know what it is about. Well, today we're going to go through a bit more light on that, and hopefully when, by the time we're done, you will learn a thing or two to guide you on what to do and joining us to have this conversation is dr peter maxwell gershon yes okay he right. is medical doctor director for parkinson's enterprise good morning good morning how are you doing i'm doing very it's well it's good to have you it's yeah. good to have you good to have you too. ulcers yeah. briefly explain to us what ulcers or what ulcer is all right all right so when we say ulcer um i think we've heard a lot about ulcer yeah. right uh, but ulcer is simply a wound or let's say a saw, mm -hmm. right? So depending on the location of mm -hmm. that ulcer, then we could, I mean, add the location, then name the ulcer. Yes. So in this case, you are talking about stomach, stomach ulcer, ulcer yes. all right? So... Um, but we have other ulcers. Yes, we have other so, so, ulcers. So name them, which other ulcers? I mean, yeah. when you have, um, you have something called the Burrilli ulcer, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's an ulcer normally that you find on the leg, the back, I mean, mostly on the skins. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, I mean, they are very ulcerated, and it's like these kind of very deep wounds on the body, on mm. the, I mean, the legs and other parts of the body. So these are the skin ulcers. Mm. But this time you're talking about, um, let's say, gastric ulcer. Yeah. Well, before we even talk about it, um, let's see how the food itself actually moves through our body. Yeah. So first you take in food. I mean, we've all had our breakfast, right? No. No. Oh, <laughs> and that's the bad part of it. That's right? the no, bad doctor part. Doctor should... advise us. <laughs> yes, but we some should be. Don't want to listen. That we is should... the bad part of it. We doctor. should be. We should be thinking Good. our so breakfast. See you, please. <laughs> we should see, be thinking our breakfast. I was waiting for this time. <laughs> doctor, thank you. But please, they, are, but please, they make available tea see, for you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even for anything. See please. No, we are not talking about tea anymore. Ah, that's it. Yeah, did I just say something? It's not missing. In fact, watch it daily. <laughs> so breakfast is actually very important, the yeah. most important meal of the day. Yeah. So then, let's say you're taking food, right? Um, the food moves to your mouth, then to your esophagus, to the... Pardon me if I use medical terms. You use medical terms, but you explain. <laughs> I'll explain, yes. Through to the esophagus, to the stomach, right? Now, when the food gets to the stomach... Um, there is this um, acidic content that the stomach releases the moment the food has hit the stomach. Mm -hmm. Now, um, these acidic contents, they help in digesting the food. Okay. So, let's say you don't have any food in your stomach mm -hmm. and these acidic contents have I been mean, released. Mm -hmm. They get into contact with a lining, a protective layer inside the stomach. So... Let's say you have a sack, a bag, a backpack, okay? Inside the backpack, you have this lining. Or just take your dress, inside the dress, the lining of mm -hmm. your dress, okay? Mm -hmm. They are there to protect the inner part of the dress. Mm -hmm. It's just like the stomach. These linings, they are there to protect the inner part of yes. our stomach. Okay. So when these acidic contents come and they get into contact with these um, inner lining or the inner protective mm -hmm. layers, it causes some cut or tear. I mean, constant repetitive exposure of this kind of um, acidic medium will cause a wear or tear or let's say a cut in this inner layer. And that mm -hmm. is how come you would have what we call the ulcer, yes. Oh. So yes, that's what actually happened. And sometimes we have um, other factors too that okay. could also contribute to that. So the biggest one is your, your constant um, um, staying away from food. No, that's not the okay, biggest, so but that also counts a lot. Okay. But actually, um, we have some bacteria, some organisms in the body. Um, they, are, they are supposed to be there normally. We all have it. They are supposed to be there. But once the activities become more, mm -hmm. let's say your food that you eat, the sanitary area, I mean, the sanitation around the food that you eat, once you don't take care of these things and you keep on ingesting these kind of foods, mm -hmm. these bacteria, they become too much in your body mm -hmm. and they will start producing also acidic medium. Mm -hmm. So they will break this protect, protective lining in your mm -hmm. stomach. Mm -hmm. Once they break the protective lining in your stomach, you are going to get a cut and you'll get an ulcer too. Mm -hmm. wow. So, I mean, 
Everything with ulcer has to do with this protective lining in our stomach mm. that is being broken down. Broken so down. anything that you do that will break it down, this is... So, so it's fair ulcer. to say that it's not only when you don't eat for a long time oh, that no, no, uh, you no, get ulcers. No, no, okay. no, no, no. Right. No. Um, that clarified. <laughs> there are a lot so of that courses. That means I don't be eating. They say breakfast is the, is, is the, the most, most important, important meal of, meal of the day. day. Yes. Now, um, what are some of the symptoms of ulcers? Mm. Of a uh, stomach ulcer? Because today we are talking about it's the gastric mm, ulcer. The gastric well. ulcer. Yeah, let me, let me add something to the courses. I think we've realized that one major thing about the courses is that people abuse over-the-counter medication a lot. Mm. Um, the pain medications. Um, you, they come to the hospital, you ask them, with the slightest pain that they get, I mean, when the body is not well, they mm -hmm. just go to the pharmacy and they get themselves um, some over-the-counter medication mm -hmm. to relieve the pain. And that has been, I mean, it has been one of the major factors that leads to ulcer. Mm -hmm. Because those medications, even though they make you feel okay, but at the end of the day, they have this side effects of also exposing this inner layer mm -hmm. in your stomach mm -hmm. and making it very harsh to it. Mm -hmm. So over-the-counter medication also very... And also, especially the exactly. painkillers. Yes, oh, okay. the painkillers, exactly. Okay. But before that, um, just speaking about the, 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 inner, the, the inner lining mm -hmm. that's uh, protective, um, how long would it take? Because yes. Because it's, it's, it's a protective tissue. Exactly. So how long would it take exactly. for it to, you know be deteriorated completely. Exactly. That's what I was saying, constant repetitive exposure. Okay. So it has to be something that you are exposed to for a very long period okay. of time. So it's not just like maybe today I'm feeling uh, um, pa body pains all over, mm. I get the um, pain meds, then I'll get ulcer. Okay. No, you have to be somebody that you've used it for over, let's say, a period of 5, 10, 15 years. Oh, wow. Every single time you go for those um, pain medication. Yeah. Yes, then you stand a very high risk of getting an ulcer. Mm. So it's not just a day or two or mm. maybe a week, mm. yes, okay. over a long period so of time. tell us about the symptoms. The symptoms, all right. So the first thing is, just imagine you have a cut on your body, right? You feel pain. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now this time, the cut is inside your stomach. So you could imagine the, the pain, pain you would get. So they always complain of severe abdominal pains. Especially, they'll say it's in the middle part of the uh, abdomen. They, it's very bad. On a scale of 1 to 10, they rate it. Mostly, you ask patients, they'll tell you it's about 7, 8. And that is serious. Mm. To have 7 or 8 out of 10 mm -hmm. is very serious, mm. yes. So the second, um, you feel nauseous most of the time. Mm. Vomiting most mm. of the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is one thing about the vomitus. When I say vomitus, the contents of your vomit, mm. the color is like that of a coffee. You see mm. the brownish mm. color, yes. So it has this coffee appearance when you vomit, has this coffee appearance. And when you use the washroom, your stools or your feces, they are very dark. Mm. The moment you are vomiting, um, coffee appearance, vomitus, and your feces are dark, you are having abdominal pain, severe ones, you're feeling nauseous. I mean, there is the phobia to even eat. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, you may lose weight. Mm -hmm. Well, others too also gain weight. The moment mm -hmm. you're having these fluctuations, mm -hmm. then you should hurry up, get to the nearest hospital because there is an impending ulcer or maybe other um, gastrointestinal yeah. diseases. So, so with, with this, I don't know, my whole body is pinning me right now. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes, yes, calm down. <laughs> now, when the food, when you have that kind of um, bruises or mm. wound in mm. your stomach, mm. which is, by the way, we're terming it as cancer, um, also. ulcer now, mm. when the food goes in your stomach, is there, are there pain? Do you experience it? Yes, pain? that is it. Because, you see, before we started, I said, once food gets into our stomach, mm -hmm. Our body releases an acid. It yeah. helps to digest the food. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine you have a cut and an acid too has ah. been released into the stomach? So it's that's how come the pain is that severe. severe. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you, mean you don't even you, have appetite. To eat. Yeah. So one thing is you would you would not even have appetite to eat because yeah. you know that once you eat, you are and going pain. to experience the well, pain. Well, you did mention yes. about um, gastrointestinal. Yes, gastrointestinal, yeah, uh -huh. meaning the stomach and the <laughs> intestines. Yeah, you could even put it Gastro day. Gastro. In, 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 in ten. Don't, 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 no. You've done well. No. 
<laughs> you're having down one. Gastro, the end. Gastro, intestinal. 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 Intestines. Gastro, intestines. Okay. So, with that, I mean, do we have other complications apart from ulcer? Yes, we have so many pathologies with regards mm -hmm. to when we say gastrointestinal, it's simply the stomach and the intestines. Mm -hmm. Any disease that will affect the stomach and the intestines, mm -hmm. we just name it gastrointestinal. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at um, stomach cancer. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. one thing about stomach cancer is it's so close to ulcer that you can't just use symptoms to know that you have stomach cancer or you have ulcer. ulcer. Exactly, because yeah, Whatever symptoms that someone with ulcer will present, once you have stomach cancer, you also have that same symptoms. Mm. You're going to have unexplained weight loss. Um, you're going to vomit and it will have that um, coffee appearance. Your stools will be that dark. I mean, um, vomiting, nausea, feeling um, anorexia, difficult to eat. I mean, mm. you don't have the appetite to eat. So it's so close. So what we do is when you come to the hospital, We'll do um, further investigations and we'll put something, we call it endoscopy. We want to, it's like a camera, yeah. mm -hmm. a tube. We put it inside, inside your body. That's, that's so painful. Oh, it's very it's painful. okay. It's so painful. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. It's just so painful. Yes, yes. <laughs> because we need to visualize. We need to get idea of what is actually happening inside you. Mm -hmm. Then possibly take a sample from your stomach, maybe mm -hmm. some of your stomach, um, a tissue from your, from your stomach. Then under microscopy, you will check, is it, is it cancerous or it's just an ulcer? Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So because we can't just be able to determine from um, the symptoms you are, yeah. you are showing mm -hmm. when it comes to stomach cancer and mm -hmm. ulcer. Then we have appendicitis over there. With appendicitis, it's mm -hmm. quite easy to know because the pain will start from the middle of your stomach, mm -hmm. then it will move to the right side. Yeah. So you feel the pain here, before you realize the pain is at the yeah. right side, then you know that, I mean, there is an impending appendicitis. Yeah, That's that, one thing you should... For that, yes. my big brother has experienced that. Yes, exactly. That wasn't, it wasn't too good. He had to be operated on. Okay. And uh, I think that had to do with the seed. Mm. Like an orange. Yes, yes, an yes, orange yes, 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 yes. They needed to, yeah, they needed of to the get appendix. its mouth. It will cause inflammation of the appendix. So when the when when you swallow a seed. Oh no no uh -huh. no! It's, it's not, not true. about that. No, it's, it's not true. It's not about when you swallow seeds. No, there are other causes to it. I mean, there are sometimes with appendicitis. Well, with appendicitis, um, it's it's there's something called appendix, right? Mm -hmm. Things are not supposed to get there. Things that you eat are not supposed to get there. Uh, so if by some conditions, some of the things you eat, they get there, uh, then the appendix will react to the thing over there. It becomes swollen. So uh, not that it's as a result of eating seeds or anything. Yeah, It could be any other thing at all. Yes, thing. it could be any other thing at all. Can, wow. the, can stress... Um, uh, contribute to the formation of all forces. Well, um, previous, I mean, school of thoughts, mm -hmm. um, they've, they've linked um, stress to ulcer. But then there is no definite cause of stress causing ulcer. Mm -hmm. But then it's a risk factor. Mm -hmm. It's a risk factor because, you see, our body, once you are stressed out, there are some hormones that are being released. Mm -hmm. And these hormones, they come to calm you down. Mm -hmm. That's how the body is. The body acts in a way that we don't have so much of everything or too little of everything. Mm -hmm. So we want to have everything in balance. In balance now, yeah. these hormones, when they come, they don't just come to calm you down. They will also cause the production of this acid in your stomach. Mm -hmm. So even though it's calming you down, but... It's also giving you something. Yes, coffee is an irritant. Yes, coffee is an irritant. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, there is these articles about it being a risk factor, mm -hmm. but we don't have a direct link as it being a major cause as compared to over-the-counter medications, medications, alcohol, and the yeah. organisms. Yeah. Oh. So it's a risk factor. Okay, it yes. is. Now let's talk about, now we've talked about all the scary things. I know you're scared. I know I'm scared too. Uh, let's talk about some of the treatments um, mm. for um, ulcers, especially um, gastric ulcer. 
ulcer, which is yes. also known as stomach ulcer. All right. So, um, with the treatment, when you get to the hospital, we need to first of all confirm that indeed what you've brought is an ulcer. Mm -hmm. uh, we do our investigations to confirm. We have, but the thing is, we need to know the cause. Is it because you are a chronic alcohol abuser or you abuse um, over-the-counter medications or it's as a result of these organisms? That's why you are having um, this ulcer. So once we establish the cause of your ulcer, mm -hmm. then we have um, some classes of drugs like the proton pump inhibitors. They, they reduce the quantity of acid in your stomach. Mm. They prevent your stomach from releasing so much acid mm. that would damage the inner protective mm -hmm. layer. But when we realize that it's as a result of that organism that I mentioned, well, the name is Helicobacter pylori, H. pylori. If it's as a result of that particular organism, mm. we have a combination of antibiotics that we will put you on. I mean, a total of three or four that we put you on for a period of 10 to 14 days. <coughs> then after that, we'll review you and see if you've eradicated. Mm. Which one is a peptic ulcer? Is it the same as gastric? Yes, yes. It is. So, so peptic ulcer, well, when you say peptic ulcer, we have, under peptic ulcer, we have gastric ulcer and duodenal ulcer. So it's like the mother, mother. over there, yes. Oh. Then under it, we have the peptic and the duodenal ulcer. Okay, so it's not like an ulcer that operates on its own. Mm -mm. Okay, so the general <laughs> theme, the general theme yeah. is peptic ulcer. Okay. But then we okay. need to find out which, which kind of which peptic, peptic ulcer is. that you have. Wonderful, yes, yes, wonderful. Yes, that's the general theme. So okay. we'll find out whether it's a gastric yeah. or duodenal. Oh, okay. Yes, and the names come as a result of the locations. Ah. Because the stomach, when you have the cut in the stomach or the sore in the stomach, then it's called gastric. gastric. But when you have the sore at just the exit points of the stomach getting to the intestines, then it becomes duodenal ulcer. Yes, duodenal ulcer. Okay. Yes, and those are all under peptic Yeah, these are all under peptic I want to know, and today we need to establish it right here on the show, because mm. have you been diagnosed of ulcer before? No. I have. Oh, okay. And, um, I mean... This is what I got. After the peptic, mm. that's, what, that's what it was said. That's okay. what the doc said mm. and all that. And then, you know, nurses come around and they're like, oh, also dear, yeah, me, I will be. I'm like, ah, yeah, me, I will be saying. Yeah. You get me. I've but heard that you, too. Yes, I've but you see, you, you just realize that probably it's about our behaviors. Mm. I mean, you know, what we eat, what we should be eating. Yes. But today, let's, let's just be very, very specific mm. on the choice of food. Okay. Because it looks like, yes, if you don't, if you're not, if we know about, you know, eating at a specific time mm. and not eating at a specific time, mm. you know, that kind of thing. But then my question here is, what are some of the things that we're supposed to eat mm. to help curb mm. ulcer, if there is any? All right. Okay, so uh, b before you get, maybe mm. he, he asked the question, maybe you want to establish the fact that we all have ulcers. <laughs> no, well, no. I don't want to go no, into I mean. that. It's not. I don't think we all have ulcers. Okay, but yes. there's no like any trace. Like everybody is at risk of having ulcer because yes, of everybody thing. is at risk of having right. ulcer. That right. is true. Right. But we all don't have ulcer. Don't but have. we are all at risk of having ulcer. Yes. Easy, one, once easy. you are eating, once you are eating, you are fine. Yeah. No. Once you are eating, you are at risk of you're getting risk. ulcer. Yes. And yes, everybody. Everybody, yeah, everybody, everybody, everybody is at risk of getting ulcer. Yeah, once people. you are eating, once you eat every day, you are at risk of getting <laughs> ulcer. So there are no specific foods that you could say that these foods can cause ulcer. However, um, foods high in acidic content. Mm. I mean, we've realized that um, processed foods mm -hmm. like the canned foods are very high in acidic content. So when you, someone that you like consuming processed foods a lot, yes, you are exposing the inner lining of your stomach to these high acidic mm -hmm. um, contents. And also spicy foods. Well, spicy foods, I've, I've also heard the myth about it, but when you come to the hospital, I mean, spicy food will not cause ulcer, but then it will irritate a pre-existing ulcer. Mm. Maybe you didn't know that you had the ulcer. Yeah. So once you eat the spicy food, where, I mean, spicy in this sense, I mean pepperish, mm. it's, it's, it will irritate it. Coffee is also an irritant. Mm. So if you have <coughs> ulcer and you are not aware about it and you drink coffee, it will irritate the... What of caffeine? 
Yes, because coffee contains caffeine. Okay. So yes, so it will irritate the mm -hmm. ulcer. Alcohol, some people see alcohol as diet. That would also, <laughs> that would also. They see alcohol as <laughs> diet. Yes. Yeah. So that would also, really? that would also, um, that would also um, irritate, irritate wow. it and it mm -hmm. will cause. Yeah. Yes. And there, are there any lifestyle changes that we're supposed to, you know, know yeah. um, uh, with respect to, to ulcer? Well. I always encourage that we eat a very well-balanced food. Mm -hmm. I mean, our food should be very balanced. It should be high in fiber. Mm -hmm. And when I say high in fiber, I mean there should be enough vegetables in our foods. Mm -hmm. We should add good fruits to our food. Mm -hmm. The reason is that, technically, when you eat three to four hours, food is supposed to leave your stomach, mm -hmm. get to the intestines. But then, if you eat foods that are rich in meat, chicken, um, you see these high protein foods, mm -hmm. they spend about six to eight hours. Now, let's not forget, the more the food to, to digest and leave your stomach mm. to the intestines. So the more food spends in your stomach, the more these acids are being released. So imagine that we are going to have a meal and you are taking just vegetables and she is taking meat, eggs and fish. The next four hours, your food would have digested, moved on to the intestines, and it will come out from the inner region. By you, because you took only meats, fish, um, chicken, um, what have you, all these things, and lots of carbohydrates, mm -hmm. the food will stay a lot more in your stomach. Means the body has to digest it, use a very long time to digest the food, mm. which exposes this inner layer to the high acidic content the body is going to release. How about sugars? Yes, sugar, sugar too is and actually high in acid uh, content. So, uh, so we should drink. carbonated drinks exactly. So mm. we should avoid these. I mean sugar actually is actually very bad for the body. So mm -hmm. I mean the natural sugars are good. The fructose from fruits, they are the best. Honey too is good. But artificial sweetness, I mean we should try to cut it down. Let yes. me mean you have head. So <laughs> then that means joke. It's almost as if, like, you cannot eat anything at all these days. I mean, let's come <laughs> to the modern side of what we're facing these days. I mean, first, we, when we came as, you know, as babies and all that, you would hear your mother, your father, mm. and everybody saying that, oh, kanenona, um, you know, there's, there's this just, but we are the 21st century. Yeah. Look at what we have <laughs> as food. Yes. I mean, how can we navigate through mm. the things that we're facing mm. and also um, the foods that are coming in, the foods that we have to our disposal, mm. so that at least we do not yes. incur anything of this sort? Yes, so that is a challenge, actually. But then, in everything you do, moderation is the key. Mm -hmm. okay. So, let's say, because of my work, I close, for example, I close 10 p.m., and by the time I get home, I cannot cook. Yeah. So I'm forced to get some of the roadside. I don't yeah. want to mention a particular brand. No, so some, some of the road, roadside yeah. foods, I mean, it's already processed. But then if I realize that I close every day at 10, then one of the weekends, I could actually cook in the house mm -hmm. and put it down. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that in a week, I'll get outside food twice Okay. Instead of getting it five times a day. Mm -hmm. okay. So in this case, you are reducing it. Yeah. So moderation is the best. Okay. Because we can't also say we are not going to eat anything at all. Exactly. So we take things in moderation. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay, that's so the key word is to take things in moderation. moderation. Exactly. Okay, that's so that you don't find yourself wanting at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. yes. Because, I mean, if you ask me, uh, the foods that we're facing um, in our 21st century, I mean, it's almost as if, like, if you don't eat them, what else are you going to eat yes. in the first mm -hmm. place? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, that's something we should look out for. Yeah. Um, Doc, is there, with, still with the lifestyle ch um, changes, um, changes mm -hmm. would exercise be something that we should look out for? I mean, um, okay. somebody who is an also patient, you exercise. know, probably, you know, weightlifting, weightlifting or, you know, because yeah. everything would come back to the to body. The body. Is, is there something of that sort? That well, exercise is, exercise is very good for the body. Okay. Well, we have other conditions that exercise is the best key. When you're looking at the heart conditions, yeah. yes, then you can talk about exercise being the best here. But when you talk about ulcer, 
also has to do with the, that protective lining in your stomach. Okay. It's so it's yes, it's inside your stomach. Okay. So exercise wouldn't do you that much. Okay. It just has to do with the things you are putting inside the body. Okay. So reduction of alcohol, mm. reduce your coffee intake. Mm. I mean, these processed mm. foods, eat food high mm. in vegetables. Mm. So. I mean, we are talking about things you are yeah. putting oh, yeah. inside. And I think you've established exactly. that because, yeah. you know, with, with even exercise, yeah. for that matter, um, you, you see the gym people yes. taking in supplements. Supplements, They're also yes. taking, you know, energy drinks yes. and some yes. energy. Yes. Um, what, what have you? Yes. All these things, how do they also affect, you know? Yes. The so energy mind? drink, you know, I said that foods rich in acid, mm -hmm. we should be very careful. Yeah. Energy drinks, they contain high in caffeine. acid, caffeine, um, sugars. And these things are very bad to the, um, the inner protective yeah. lining of the stomach. So yeah. sometimes I've had um, one, he, he said he's an athlete. I've had an athlete come to me at the hospital and he'll be like, um, dog, I wanted to get these muscles, so they recommended these proteins for me. Mm -hmm. And I told him to read what is on the protein and realize that the content of caffeine inside it was too much. So I was telling him that, yes, you'll get the muscle, all right, but at the end of the day, it will leave a defect on you. Yeah. You're going to, it will leave you, it will expose you to things like ulcers and other conditions that you are not willing to do. Mm -hmm. So why not you prepare your own proteins mm -hmm. and take it in mm -hmm. rather than getting these processed yeah. ones? Yes. Oh, now, these are some of the things. Okay, sure. Now, we, we talk about the, 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 how ugly the ulcers look yes. and what we could do to prevent it. But how about untreated ulcers? Are there any... Um, major complications and, and tell us about the complications that there are a lot <laughs> there are lots of complications actually that's our fear um, some people don't realize they have ulcer until it's too late mm. i mean in ghana that's what we see in the hospitals uh, the, the normal ghanian will never come to the hospital until it's too late before so um, we get the complications a lot mm -hmm. we are looking at perforation when i say perforation let's say let me use this as an example okay mm -hmm. it's a bit rigid but let me use it let's say the whole thing is your stomach, right? And there is a cut inside. I mean, this plastic is protecting whatever inside the bottle from yeah. coming mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a cut inside, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't treat that cut for it to heal, it will perforate inside. As in, it will go inside. Mm -hmm. Once it goes inside, the content of whatever that is in the stomach mm -hmm. will come out. Mm -hmm. And the whole abdomen, now not just your stomach, the whole abdomen, every organ there, will be exposed to whatever that is inside your stomach. Mm. And your body will react to it. Once your body starts reacting <coughs> to it, your blood pressure will calm down. There will be massive bleeding, mm. internal bleeding. Okay. You will bleed internally. You will not know. I mean, you will not see it, but you will be bleeding internally. And you will realize you get tired easily. Um, your heart starts beating very fast. Mm -hmm. Your kidneys will start shutting down. Mm. So these are some of the complications that ah. we are worried about. And sometimes there is this popular one, the gastric outlet obstruction. It simply means that because of that ulcer there, mm -hmm. any food inside your stomach cannot move out into the intestines. Yeah. So three, four days, five, seven days, every food you eat just stays there. They don't move on. Wow. It will be there for a week then it means you are not getting any nutrient from the food. You are eating, but you are losing weight. You are eating, you don't get any energy. Hmm. So these are some of the complications of And then food. when the food is there for long, so it can cause... Yes, when the food is there, it will cause a different form of... I mean, bacteria will grow over mm -hmm. there. You will get fever. You start having a lot of imbalances in your body because the food is not moving oh. as they are supposed to move. So you get so you even vomit. You realize that your vomit contains food you've eaten four days ago mm. because the food cannot go on. You get it. So these are some of the complications that um, all says, you know. But then <laughs> it's, we shouldn't be um, worried about I think, it. <laughs> I think it's fair to be worried. Um, we're talking stomach ulcers as a gastric ulcers here on the show this morning. And Doc is genuinely scaring us oh we yes, shouldn't yeah. be scared uh, very scared <laughs> very scared, scared. And we'll talk about <laughs> that but then I, I just feel like i i share in the sentiments with mimi where you're talking about all these things yeah. and uh, just as a normal human being you yeah. just realize that oh maybe um pertaining to how you work 
and what you do, you just don't have time for yourself to be able to, 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 to eradicate certain things or prevent certain things mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. And the thing here is uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe in, 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 in another way, you are you're trying your best yeah. to adhere to all these things, mm. but it's still not even working. Still <laughs> yeah. I know. But, but I also, I'd like to ask if there's a genetic a predisposition to so, a gener getting Well, lobster. no, we, yeah. not necessarily. We've not established any link as also being a genetic disease. Wow. However, um, we've realized that close family relations can get it. And, and that is as a result of that organism I spoke of. So if I'm in the same house with you and you have this, a lot of this organism in you mm -hmm. and we share the same plate, the same bowl, the mm -hmm. same spoon, there is a chance that you will pass this organism to me through the food that we are eating. Oh, so wow. I would also get that in me and... Okay, so now I understand. So it's more like when genetic. I did go to the hospital, I said I've been diagnosed before. So when I did go to the hospital, that's what the doctor asked. Like, um, has your any mom had close, this before? Yes, any this close person? relation. Because yes. he said it's peptic ulcer. And I was like, ah, me, peptic ulcer. <laughs> yes. So it's not yeah, about wow. genetics, but because of how close you are to the person you are sharing. Mm. The same. Mm. Yes, exactly. Mm. You are sharing the same food with. Let's go back to the lifestyle changes a okay. little bit. Okay. Um, I, I want us to throw a bit more light because now we've, we've scared everybody, including myself. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <it's laughs> everybody now knows not to go close to <laughs> any... But some of the things that we could do as yeah. um, regular Ghanaians, no more day-to-day -day activities that we could, we could engage in that will protect us, that will okay. um, help us not get into these situations. Mm -hmm. um, because for a very long time, we've been told that what causes ulcer is... <laughs> so please um, tell us, take us uh, through all right. um, some of the things that we could do. So with the lifestyle changes, right, first of all, let's talk about um, the getting over-the-counter medications anytime that you are feeling body pains. Mm -hmm. That's very bad. You need to get a doctor's prescription before you can get any pain meds at all. Because pain meds can predispose yeah. you to getting ulcer. Yeah. That's one. Mm -hmm. Then secondly... Um, taking alcohol, I mean, if you cannot stop drinking alcohol, then you can take it in moderation. Okay. I mean, be moderate in consuming mm -hmm. alcohol. And thirdly, your foods should be rich in vegetables so that they don't stay longer time in your stomach before mm -hmm. they get digested. Then let's try to eat foods that are not processed. Like these processed foods in cans, sodas, mm -hmm. let's, let's reduce them. Mm. Once we reduce this, yes, we stand a higher risk of not getting mm -hmm. ulcer. But once we continue to, I mean, mm -hmm. munch on these mm -hmm. things, then, I mean... Now, you when know. you do talk about vegetables, um, vegetables in a sense where you are putting them together or you are using them to do a particular dish... Or just about just going the, and oh, getting your vegetables, vegetables and just I mean, it's quite unfortunate <laughs> that in Ghana here, our dish, we actually don't really put a lot of vegetables. Yeah. But when you travel outside, they, they buy, they get different kinds of vegetables. Mm -hmm. They cook it and together they eat it with their um, cups or whatever proteins mm -hmm. that they are having. But I think in Ghana, we, we, we do have... Um, contumery stew. Mm. We do have um, the, the one, the cabbage, carrots, green pepper, that stew too. So, I mean, when you, when you put, when you eat more of these kind of foods, yes, that's what I mean. Okay. You can also just get some carrots. My dad, for once, he just likes eating carrots. Like, he'll be there instead of afternoons, you just go get carrots and you'll be chewing carrots. Chewing carrots. Yes, so if you, you are... You don't understand <laughs> He does that yeah. a lot, yes. So, I mean, that's something that we can practice well, more. Why instead don't of, mind? Do you? <laughs> instead of... No, or, or the juice. So you can blend carrots and drink it. Yes. It's mm. actually very you, good. You, yes. prefer, if you want to taste it nice, add um, apple. Okay. It makes the taste yes. better. Yes. No, I don't think I'll go for the juice. I just think I'll just... Juice. Juice. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. the juice is like nice. Like a bunny. My brother, <laughs> the juice is nice. All right. Um, but then there's also the school of thought mm. that too much of everything is it's bad. bad. Should, should you just all of a sudden change your lifestyle to me? It's not even possible because imagine 
how old are you now? You've not been doing that. It's mm -hmm. not going to be easy that all of a sudden you go to the other side saying you are I, eating I, only. I am, I am a Gemini. We do that. Oh, you do that. Yeah. That's good. We, we, so, we, can, we can change tomorrow morning and, and that will be our new life. So I think... I that we get tired of it easily. <laughs> I think you could, you could, you could, you should just try to, I mean, instead of, introduce it gradually. Mm -hmm. I feel like maybe today I ate banku. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow I can just go for just contumery stew with mm -hmm. fish. Mm -hmm. Yes, contumery stew. stew with fish. Yes. In, um, yes, yeah. so, I mean, you get your fish nice, about two pieces of, I mean, two pieces of fish, you get your contumery stew, and you take it today. The following day, you can eat your rice. The next day, you can go for, I mean, vegetable stew and rice. So, like, I mean, we are changing it, but we are introducing it gradually. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything in moderation, as mm -hmm. I said. So mm -hmm. you shouldn't just be like, okay, I just want to eat only vegetables. Mm -hmm. You get tired and you wouldn't be able to continue. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. so moderation is the best. Hmm. Ah. I know. That's why I said we all stand at risk of getting <laughs> ulcer. Yes. Yeah. So it's not that we all have it, but we all stand no. at a risk of getting ulcer. Since we are eating, we all have that. I don't know. Mm. Now, but do we have... Do we have a campaign mm. or an initiative, you know, on, 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 on the government scale or, you know, right here in Ghana to really talk about this. Because think here is, of course, we're talking about it right here mm. on MX24. So yeah. that's a form of making the awareness known. But yeah. on, the, on the government side, is there any champion course? Is there any um, uh, initiative or project being done? Okay. On this, and especially with patients mm. who are, you know, with ulcer. With Is ulcers. there anything of that sort? Well, right now, at the hospitals, right, we have the counselors that they advise you on your diet. So when you come to the hospitals, we have, um, we can recommend uh, a dietitian. Okay. And mostly these dietitians, they would guide you as to the foods you should be eating okay. and the foods that you should be avoiding okay. so mostly for now this is what we are doing mm -hmm. but then um we are trying to at least once a while go on national television as we are doing mm -hmm. to also educate the public mm -hmm. on some of the risk factors <coughs> and the causes of ulcers mm -hmm. but then i i would tell you that once you see those symptoms just come to the hospital mm -hmm. tell your problem to the doctor, mm -hmm. rather than going to get those pain medication. Mm -hmm. Because in Ghana, when we did the polls, we realized that people that take, the ulcer comes because most Ghanaians like to take over-the-counter medication mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. actually the thing the big problem. causing the mm -hmm. ulcer. So and that is with more of the painkillers, With right? more of the painkillers, <coughs> exactly. More of the painkillers, NSAIDs, to be specific. Mm -hmm. More of the painkillers. So um, once you are able to reduce these NSAIDs, Yes, the food is also there, but the insects causes it more than the food itself. Mm. So we should, I mean, reduce that more. Mm. Yes, that is the most uh, important. Before we go to my, my next question, which is, by the way, how, uh, if it is expensive to, 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 he, to, to get a medication and assistance and medical attention uh, if, you're, if you're an ulcer patient, do allergy pills, mm. do they, are they very hard drugs that can... Also. Allergic pills. Allergy pills. Oh, so okay. Pills so, like, let's say you have allergic reaction, they give you a yeah, pill to yeah, curb yeah, the allergic yeah. reaction. So, they contain steroids, and these steroids are found to also be very harmful to the body. So, then, um, before you just go to get an allergic pill, you need to consult your physician, and we need to find out have you been ever diagnosed of ulcer before, then we'll know the kind of allergic pill that we would give you. Yeah, so don't just go and get any allergic pill. We need to find out okay. first before. Then again, as an... As I, I want him to answer okay, right, if cool. it's ex expensive to um, manage um, ulcers. And by the way, expensive. do they go away <laughs> completely? Do you uh, heal completely from ulcers? Yeah, before, before, we, we had not gotten full concept of the disease mm -hmm. but now with research we've gotten to know that aside the um mm. these over-the-counter pain meds mm. the organism actually the organism is the number one cause of it yeah. i should make that clear the organism and that organism you get it 
as long as you are eating, you may get that organism, that H. pylori organism. So we realize that um, these organisms are causing it more. So now we've developed some combination of antibiotics that take care of the organism. But mm -hmm. you should be on it till we clear you that, okay, don't take it anymore. But once you've not been cleared, you should always be compliant to your medication. So you, we, we're not able to heal completely from... There is a, there's always a high chance of recurrence when you have ulcer. Oh. Yes, it might go, but you always have that high chance that it will recur right. again. That's the thing about it. And when, when we're talking about the money, the money involved, <laughs> it's a lot of money. No, uh, well, I mean, money is relative, so how do I put this? It's exactly it's, what <laughs> I think it's manageable. Eh. Yes, I think it's manageable. It's manageable. Mm. You just have to be disciplined to take your drugs. Mm. Yes, I think it's manageable. The drugs are not expensive. They are okay. They are a couple of antibiotics. They are okay. Yeah. I, I, I just wanted to chip in with, um, you know, because you cannot say that um, since you're a patient with ulcer, um, you won't be taking anything spicy at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. So, um, in moderation, um, how is a patient with ulcer supposed to take in, especially pepper? Because pepper is something that you'll find mm -hmm. along the way in almost all the foods that you, you, you will be taking yes. in, a apart from it not being, you know, the sugary type, mm. you get it. So if it's not sugar, it is pepper. Yeah. At the end of the day, because you hear some people say that, oh, and that year, from an upper end to an it's all sugar, sugar, sugar. It's been sugar, sugar, sugar. So I need a little bit of pepper in my system. You get me. Aha. So, um, in moderation, can you let us know um, for somebody who is not somebody who does not have also, somebody who, who has, has the also. Also. Okay. Yes. Um, in moderation, what, uh, how, how, the amount? What, what are we supposed to do? You see, the problem is that even if you take in food, when you have ulcer and you take in foods that has no pepper, you will still feel pains. That's the issue. Oh. So imagine even if you put just one pepper in your food, you are still going to feel it. Oh. Wow. So you yourself, you will be doing yourself a great um. disservice if you go in for yeah. the pepper. Yeah. That's the whole issue. Mm. Also, once I said, once food hits your stomach, mm -hmm. those acids will be released. Even when you think of food, acid is being released. That's how come they said, um, if you oh, starve yourself, so? you will get um, ulcer. Also. Yeah, because the, the perception of something very nice, like, oh, last week I ate this food, it's really nice. Just that perception, you've released that um, gastric acid in, mm. inside your stomach. Some yes. of us, some of when us. you smell something <laughs> very nice, I yeah. mean, some nice food. Nice food, aroma. Yeah, the aroma itself, oh, you wow. release that acid into your stomach. That acid, that's, can't you block it? <laughs> so <laughs> some of the drugs, that is what the drugs do. So some, some of the drugs the will block so the acid production. So yeah. that's, you yes, know the way, the way the... my body operates, yeah. if I don't feel like eating something in my mind, yeah. I will not feel hungry. Okay, okay. Not, like, I don't just... It, it's rare to see me just... Oh, my sorry, no problem. I come with me, me But the moments I think about what I want to eat, because I always tell him that, like once we're done with the show, I tell him today I want to eat. Today I want to eat this. <laughs> I always have to have something I want to eat. Yes. Else I'm not hungry. I can stay all day without food. I promise. Okay. If I don't feel like eating anything, I'm good. <laughs> all right. And then the carb the carbonated drink suffer. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so get no, but I love I love your sincerity. <laughs> this is you in yeah. clean. Like there's nothing hidden. You get right. it. As in a food is hard work for me. Yeah. Food is a lot of work for yes. me. So yes. anytime I hear these kind of things, they actually do scare me when you say that. The thought of food. Yeah, the thought of it, the, the smell the of, of food. Yes, the thought the smell of, food. of food. Yes, the smell. Because everything's from the brain. Wow. So the thought of it, the smell of it, I mean, even when you remember it, yes, your gastric acid gets released. Because the body thinks that food is around. Mm. The That's body why you thinks, are saying. Yes, the this body, body thinks food is around. Gets own mind. Yes, the body has its own way of operating. Ah. So it will release because he thinks that, yes, food is around. So it needs to come so that 
the digestion will take place. Let's let's di digress a little bit. Okay. So you see those um, ulcers that you talked about that mm. are on the skin, mm. those ones that are wounds that yes. are physical, like mm. are they ones that can be healed? Because you talked about it being a deep wound. Yeah, deep uh, wound, it, yes. it takes longer to heal. Yes, it takes longer to heal. But does it heal completely? Yes. If It depends. You know, mostly the diabetic ones, uh, we might end up cutting amputating yes uh, it all has to do with we have to find out the cause of the ulcer mm. and sometimes it's very difficult to find that's why the ones with the skin is very difficult to find we have the tuberculosis ulcer as a result of tuberculosis yes sometimes tuberculosis is not just about coughing mm. you could have an ulcer that's a result of tuberculosis mm. yes and the antibiotics for that it will take you about six to eight months to complete that treatment mm. and it takes a lot of discipline to complete that treatment mm -hmm. so sometimes people who are not disciplined uh, they are not compliant to medication as in they don't take the medication always so these ulcers tend not to heal but once you are disciplined enough mm -hmm. uh, yes there is always a chance that you're going to you're heal, going to heal ulcers, completely from yes. it. But those ones too, have we found causes for them? Yes, mm. so some of them are as a result of these bacteria organisms, as I said. From the outside? From or the outside. From, oh. the outside. from the outside. We have organisms, bacteria all over. We have mm. bacteria all over. I mean, on our body. You can wash your hand now. We check your hand, there will still be bacteria there. So we have bacteria all over the body. So when they become too much at a particular place, then you are going to have an issue over there. Mm -hmm. Yes, so they are everywhere. Everybody stands at risk of getting any of these diseases. Mm. Yes. So we try to be at a very well ventilated place mm -hmm. so that when somebody has a particular organism, the person will not pass it on to you easily. These are some of the um, things you can put in place to at least um, curb these um, mm -hmm. epithelia. We call it epithelia ulcers because it's on the skin. Yes. Mm. Wow. What other very major conditions can also cause if untreated? Like, so we'll, Jay has something he says our bodies are intertwined. Exactly. That's so right. this organ is working with this organ. Mm. So if the stomach has an issue, like an ulcer, is there a way it can cause a major problem in any part of the body? And what could that be? So do we remember the, the scenario I used the bottle to yes, explain? Yes, 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 yes. So let's assume. The ulcer has perforated and you are bleeding internally, internally. right inside yeah. your body. Yeah. Your blood pressure goes down because now your blood is reduced, your blood pressure goes down. Yeah. Now the kidneys, they hate it when our blood pressures are down. They don't like it because they need to always get enough blood. And the moment they detect that your blood pressure has gone down, they shut down, they close because they don't want to work again. You need to conserve the little blood you have in you. Mm. Now, the ulcer is causing bleeding. Your kidneys are not getting enough blood. Mm -hmm. So the kidneys have shut down. Everything that the kidney is supposed to do is to clear waste from your body. Now, mm. all this waste will be built up in you. Mm. You start having, we call something edema, those big legs. You see your legs start becoming big. Your abdomen start becoming big. Under your eyes, your eyelids, they all start swelling up means it can actually lead to death because you have a lot of toxic substance in you. In the your kidney body. is not, it's not processing anything. Yes, yeah, so you are, you are having a lot of buildup in you. Mm. And I also talked about, I mean, for me, I think the acute kidneys, no, I think, we've seen at the hospital, the acute kidney injury is one of the major things that we are mainly worried about. And they're bleeding internally. We are really worried about these two things. And what I said about... Um, the gastric outlet obstruction, mm -hmm. whereby the foods you've eaten keep at one place. At one place, yes, yeah. they don't move. So mm -hmm. these are some of the serious challenges that. So let's modify okay. our lifestyle. Now, lastly, and, fruits. Fruits. Okay. What 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 what, what role do they play with um, ulcer? Well, because it's... we do know that citric. One yes, two, yes, no. uh, acidic. Yes, you are right. So I used to advise people that don't take fruit on an empty stomach. Uh -huh. Yes, so if you want to take fruit, there should be some food you've eaten before you take the fruit. Mm. So mix it. So once you've eaten a little of your carbs, then you can add more of the fruit. Mm. Because fruit in itself, lime, blueberries, even grapes, mm -hmm. they are very high in yeah, acidic, acidic mm. medium. Yeah. So you just have to also 
take it in moderation. Okay. Too much of everything is bad. Is bad. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if you stayed on this show through and through, I know you're scared, you're shaking, you're, you're, you're adjusting your lifestyle. That is what we intend to do. We intend to make sure that you live a more healthy life. And thank you so much, Doc, for coming through with this conversation. It was very, very educative. We are very excited to always have you here. Uh, we had a conversation on ulcer. That is gastric ulcer, that's stomach ulcer as well. Dr. Peter Maxwell, um, guessing he is a medical doctor and director for Frankincense Enterprise. How do we yes. find you? How do we connect with you? Well, if someone wants to talk more about this. The all right, so um, right now I have my Instagram um, mm -hmm. handle. That's um, Max Geshen. Okay. Um, just search Max Geshen. I use only Instagram for okay. now. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Max Geshen. It looks like he was hard to get you on social media. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I just use Instagram. You look like one that was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just so don't please like find him my yeah. Max Geshen, Max Geshen yes, that's on uh, Max Instagram. Geshen, Instagram. Connect yes. with him, ask him all the questions that you need to ask him, and if he needs to bring you in, he will. Uh, you're still on the AM Club here on MX24. Um, we're back with something even more exciting. Don't move. We'll be right back. <laughs>